Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and today we're gonna to take a look at a variety of new makeup. So we have a couple of the new Suku items that are launching on May 11th and May 12th at Selfridges followed by Harrods and Liberty. So we're gonna take a look at these. These two were gifted to me. I did order the rest of the collection or I pre-ordered it. So I will post that as soon as that arrives. And then we're also gonna be taking a look at the new Guerlain Terracotta Luminizer in Ivory. So I've been wearing this for uh, probably like two, three weeks on and off. And so we're gonna talk about this. We've also got the new Hermes Rose Bruyere Lipstick. So this is satin in number 19. It's one of the new shades and it is a permanent color. So we're gonna take a look at this one as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off with the Suku items. And thank you so much to Suku for sending these to me. So normally our Suku packaging is black, but you can see that for this summer collection, which by the way is inspired by gemstones. We'll talk more about the collection in the full video when I receive the rest of my items. But you can see that this is a white, kind of like a creamy ivory, but there's a little bit of a green reflect in the plastic here. So, you know, it's supposed to be a little bit opalescent and you can see there is just a little bit of faint like shimmer in the palette as well. So different packaging for them, very beautiful. The blush, by the way, has the same type of packaging and everything in this collection is limited edition. So this is the eyeshadow palette in 125 and I have to say I'm very enamored with this. So let's take a look at the arm swatches. Our first shade, which is kind of this light peachy pink. This is a topper shade, so it's not gonna show up too much in the swatch for me, but you can see that we have kind of this light peachy pink shimmer. And I like to think of these topper shades from Suku as scattered starlight because when you pat them on with your finger onto the lids, that's what you get. Next, we have kind of this rusty orange kind of shade. And you can see it's kind of like that 70s orange, but a little bit subdued. It's not gonna be super bright. I think it's a really beautiful shade, but the reason people are gonna buy this palette is for this shade here. And this is a duochrome from Suku. So you can see we've got green, and kind of this bronze shade. And the bronze, when the light hits a certain way, you get a little bit of red in there as well. But a lot of times we've seen those duochromes that are kind of green and red. This is really more bronze than red. And it gives you kind of that, like, kind of like a rusty tree bark kind of brown. And it goes to like a leaf green. And I think it's really beautiful. And the, the difference in the tones from your typical you know, green, red duochrome is what makes this one kind of stand out. It's a little bit more subtle, and the two shades that you get are both gonna be a little bit more neutral, not really out there, so it's more of a subtle duochrome in that sense because the shades are more, more subdued, but you definitely get that flip. It's not hard to see that flip. And then last up, we have this cool brown. So this is a cool tone, deep brown. And I have to say, I love this palette. Totally enamored with this. We're gonna take a look at a comparison, some comparison swatches in a couple minutes, but let's take a look at these eye looks I created with this while we talk a little bit more about this. Now, like all other Suku products, this is made in Japan and we have 6.2 grams of product here. You get all day wear with these colors, absolutely no creasing on my eyes with or without primer for a full like 12 hour day of wear. I haven't really, I don't, don't typically wear them longer than that, but they can definitely go 12 hours for me without any creasing or signs of wear here. No fading or anything, no fallout, really great formulas. Suku eyeshadows, oh, Suku formulas in general are some of my all time favorite. And we have a 12 month shelf life on these shadows. And I have to say, I think they are fantastic. One of the great things about the Suku quads is that they always include different finishes. So we again, we have that sparkle topper, that first peachy pink shade. That's gonna be very soft. Again, uh, you know, I think it looks like scattered starlight if you kind of press that onto your lid. And this is gonna be firmly pressed in the pan. It's kind of a hard pressed shimmer. It's not like so sparkly that you're gonna get like fallout and glitter under your eyes or anything like that, but it's just gonna give you a nice little accent. You don't notice so much the color 
uh, of it more so just like, uh, you know, just a little bit when you the light hits it a certain way. Meanwhile, moving on to that rusty orange kind of shade, that is going to be a matte and, you know, it's more of a, a powder matte type formula, very easy to go on, very easy to blend out to either subdue the color and make it a little bit softer or to intensify it. So very versatile. The dark brown, the fourth shade, is going to be the same type of formula as this. So they're both gonna be very easy to use mattes that can be built up or built down. And then our duochrome, this is gonna be a little bit different. So this is a little bit more firmly pressed than uh, the matte shades. However, it's not as firmly pressed as the uh, topper shade that's in the top left hand corner of the quad. So I think it's really nice. It goes on obviously more strongly if you use your finger, which is going to be true of pretty much every eyeshadow. <laughs> and if you want to make this very soft and light, it goes on well with eye brushes as well. Now the quads do come with, you know, your typical eye utensils where we have a dual ended foam tip applicator and dual ended synthetic brushes. I personally like to use my own brushes. I have tested these shadows in particular with squirrel hair, goat hair, synthetic brushes, and they have gone on very well with all of them, even with the squirrel hair brushes, uh, you know, because these were the Suku original squirrel hair brushes, they still, you know, build up very easily. A lot of times when you use something with that softer hair type, you get a much lighter look. It can be harder to pick up. And I wasn't sure how that would work with this duochrome shade because it is a little bit more firmly pressed. But honestly, you're able to build this up just as much, uh, you know, as you would want to. So perhaps it's still gonna be a little bit more intense if you're using a fingertip or a foam tip applicator, but you can definitely build it up to a great level even with soft hair brushes. Now I have to say, I started using this palette and I immediately loved it, you know. I, I was like just so drawn to it. Really love this duochrome shade. And as I was wearing it, it kind of dawned on me as to what palette it kind of reminded me of the most. And that's actually gonna be one of my all-time favorites, the Byredo Metal Boots in the Snow. Now, obviously we have very different shades in this palette, but this duochrome is what I wanted to compare. Now, the tones of this is gonna be, they're gonna be a little different. The Byredo is gonna be more intense, but you can see the green here is also gonna be a little bit more, it's like a deeper green. This is, the suku is gonna be like a brighter leaf green versus more of a deeper like summer grass kind of green. You know, not the, the fresh brand new grass, but after it's gone, grown a little bit, it's a little bit more mature. And then we have also kind of like this bronzy reddish brown kind of shade. It will be a little bit richer in the Byredo. This is gonna be a little bit more subdued in the Suku, but this is one of my favorite shadows of all time. And the Suku is basically just a slightly more subdued version of that. So they're gonna be pretty close. And that is definitely gonna be my best eyeshadow comparison for that duochrome. Now the other shades in this palette are going to be very different. Let's take a look at this one here. This is actually going to be a real, I'm going to put it here because it doesn't go, but you can see it's a deep forest green in the pan. It almost looks brown uh, when the light hits a certain way. Then we have kind of this silver, we have a deep blue, and we have like another silver. So very different color palette in general, but that duochrome is going to be a, fairly similar, but more intense. Likewise, we have the Isamaya Industrial Palette, and we're gonna take a look at this shade here, which is called Whip. And let's take a look at how this one compares to that duochrome. We're gonna put that one right there. And you can see that, again, we have kind of that brown green flip, but this is gonna be lighter. And yeah, the, the flip on this is actually gonna be a warmer tone brown versus the Suku, so it's, it's got more yellow in it overall. Just to make that a little bit darker so you can see that a little bit more, but you can really see the yellow in that shade in both the green and the brown when that flips, but it is gonna be another similar shade. 
So that's what we're gonna focus on now for eyeshadow comparisons. And I feel like the other three shades, you know, those are ones that you can get in a variety of palettes. They're not really your special shades here. However, if you have any requests for comparisons, please leave them down below in the comments or DM me on Instagram. I'm at Alexis Jong on Instagram, and I can include those once I get the rest of my items. I'll include them in that video there. So let's go ahead and move on to the blush from Suku. This is, again, limited edition. It's shade number 140, and this is stunning. So the last time we saw kind of this design, it was actually a melting powder highlighter from Suku. Now they have discontinued that formula because of the, you know, the lack of a particular ingredient that they need. So this is not the melting powder formula, although it might look like it. It is gonna be a pure color blush. And you can see we've got this beautiful brown, kind of a beige, we've got some peachy pink and a blue all swirled together. So let's take a look at a swatch of this and we're just gonna kind of mix it all together. I have to say, I really like this. So it's interesting because it's kind of this soft, warm fawn kind of shade, it's just another swatch there. But that blue in there, when you put that on and you swirl it in, it actually really does kind of cool it off. So although you have that warmth, it doesn't look as warm on the skin as you would expect because that blue, you know, the, the light will hit that and kind of cool it off a little bit. So it doesn't have kind of those like yellow undertones that you would notice during light reflection. So I think it's really beautiful. Let's look at the demos here. Now in this demo, I wanted to apply this with two different brushes. So I used the Fude Japan Cheek Brush, which is actually a dupe for the original Suku Cheek Brush. So they're both they're both made by Kairado actually. And this is, you know, a really great soft brush, but you can see that this is gonna put the color on incredibly lightly. This is more for your barely there kind of look. And I think it really gives a nice natural look to the skin but I also wanted to see what it looked like built up. So I used the Sonia G Master Face Brush. This is one of my favorite powder brushes and it's pretty dense, but it still has kind of that domed blush shape. So you're not, it's not truly a, it's like I, what I consider a semi buffing brush. So it's not as dense as a true buffing brush, but it is definitely gonna be more firm and more dense than your traditional blush brush. So it's kind of in the middle. And you can see that this definitely puts the product on more strongly with one layer with this brush, you still have a very light application, but you can build this up. Regardless, even after three layers though, this is not going to get significantly deep. This is definitely going to be for fair and light skin tones. I think once you hit medium, it's going to just be too light. So I think it's a beautiful blush. Now the pure color blush line in general from Suku is typically meant to be kind of your soft washes of color. They're usually going to be very light. They do have some more pigmented shades, of course, but the majority of the aesthetic for pure color blushes is very light, kind of ethereal. You usually have like a little bit of a highlighter blended in. Usually it's like all the way to one side, so you can choose whether you wanna mix that in or not. In this case, it's kind of swirled together and you get a very faint luminescence with this. As you can see, it's definitely not gonna be glittery or sparkly in any way. It's really just a very, very soft, subtle, satin sheen, but mixed in with the matteness of the rest of the blush, it's very, very subtle. Overall, I have to say, I think this is a gorgeous blush. I really love this blush for like your natural everyday kind of look. Let's just do a couple of quick comparisons. And again, if you have any requests for comparisons, please let me know for the video on the rest of the Suku collection. I will try to add those in. All right, so just a few quick comparisons. This is another pure color blush. This is in the shade 125, so this was a limited edition shade. This is gonna be a bit more peachy. I'm gonna put that vertically right there. You can see it definitely has more peach than brown. And this is a pure color blush in 129, and I have to say I really like this one. This is another great neutral shade, also limited edition. You can see these are gonna be similar, but the 129 is a little bit cooler and it's a little bit more brown versus more beige in the 140. 
we're gonna look at a few of the melting powder blushes. This one here is shade four. And these formulas are gonna be a little bit more intense than the pure color blush. You can see that this definitely has a bit more orange in there, a little bit more red. It's gonna be a deeper shade in general as well. And then we have five. This is actually used as a mixer shade to warm up blushes that are too cool. I'm gonna put that one right there. You can see it's really gonna be more like a marigold orange kind of shade. And that can be used to kind of mix in with other things. And then the last one I want to look at is number nine. And really beautiful shade here. Let's put that one right here so you can kind of see. And this is gonna be a little bit more red. And it's also a little bit deeper. So as for the Pure Color Blush, this is also gonna be made in Japan. We have a one year shelf life on here and we have 6.4 grams of product. And I have to say, I really love it. I think it's great for every day for fair and light skin tones. But again, it's definitely one that's not gonna work for everybody. There is another blush in the collection and I did order that. So I will share that in the full video. Let's go ahead and move on to the Guerlain Terracotta Luminizer. So this is something I actually was not gonna purchase originally because in the photos, it looked too warm to me. And even though this one here is shade zero, zero cool ivory, it still looked a little golden. So let's take a look at this. I have been using this. You can use this as a subtle highlight, or you can build this up to be a bit more blingy, but you can see that we do have kind of this soft peachy gold kind of tone to it. However, it's definitely not going to be as warm as some highlighters. And I did compare it just recently in the Suku Summer Collection video with that highlighter, which is kind of like a deeper, more intense version of this. You can see though that this does have some soft pale gold. I do wish that I had a little bit more pink in there. And in comparison to my favorite Guerlain highlighter, which is no longer, that was the Meteorites Pearl Dust Trio. I love that. The formula for these is gonna be a little different. This is gonna be a little bit more firmly pressed. Let's look at the demos here. Um, so you can definitely build this up. You can bling this out if you want with like a more dense buffing brush or something like that. But I personally like to get the more subtle application with either a fan brush, which will be very subtle, or a highlighting brush such as like the Sonuji Detail Pro or something like that. So, you know, overall, I think it's a really nice blush. We have seven grams of product in here. It's made in Italy and there's a six month shelf life. Now it is gonna be a firmly pressed, kind of a metallic finish to the blush. And it feels nice going on. It's definitely easy to pick up just a little bit or to pick up more product. It is not one of those firmly pressed products that feels like it's going to be getting a hard pan, uh, unfortunately. So like the, the new Chanel cheek palette, I do have an update on that. If you haven't seen that, it's on Instagram and TikTok. And basically the Tondress palette that I picked up with the big, you know, the oversized blushes and their, their blush and eyeshadows, those have started becoming a little bit harder for me to use. This does not feel like that is going to happen to this formula. It feels like a nice formula. And yeah, overall, I'd have to say that this is a nice highlighter. However, it's not my favorite out of the ones I have recently been coming up. I still love the Hermes Rose Atacama just a little bit more. And let's compare those. So this is the Hermes Rose Atacama and you can see we kind of have like a trio of colors in there. Let's go ahead, we'll put that vertically. You can see that this is gonna be cooler, has a little bit of rose in there. It's also gonna be lighter. There's a bit more of that whiteness to the base. Now this is the Guerlain Meteorites Pearl Dust Palette, which I mentioned. This is one of my favorites. I know it looks like I've barely used it, but I've actually used this a ton. I used it for a year straight, but you just need so, little bit of product, but you can see even just touching this, this is going to be a softer formula and we do still have kind of that metallic finish, but the Meteorites Pearl Dust palette is still just a little bit creamier uh, in texture. And I don't know, I just, I like that formula a little bit better. And I think the finish of it is 
these they're all kind of like that metallic finish but i feel like there's a little bit i don't know it just looks a little bit creamier on the skin to me uh compared to the newer guerlain terracotta highlighter so you know overall though i think it's a nice highlighter i think it is definitely worth looking at if you are looking for a shade like that because i do think it's a great formula this is the Tom Ford in Moonlight. We're gonna take a look at this lightest shade here and just see how that compares. You can see that's gonna be lighter. Let me see if I have a deeper one. Let's try this one here in Nude Light. I think this is, this is too dark. Yeah, that's too dark. We can try the light one next to that because this is actually gonna be a, a gold. Yeah, no. Those are kind of my closest. So again, it's a nice highlighter. So it's definitely one worth looking into if you're interested in that shade. Now, moving on, our last item for today, we have the new Rouge Hermes 19 Satin A Rose Bruyere. And Hermes just recently released a whole bunch of new lipsticks. They are in the permanent line packaging and they are finally at Hermes US. They were released at Selfridges uh, back in, back a while ago. So I actually have a video on those. I'll leave that linked down below. I'll also leave my newest Hermes video there as well. So you can take a look. And this shade I think is gorgeous. So this is what's on my lips. It's a beautiful rose shade. I do have to say though, if you're looking at it in the bullet, I think it still looks just a little bit cooler in the bullet than it does on the skin. You can see it's a pretty neutral medium rose. So let me just put up a built up swatch there. And I love the satin finish of this. I think it's a really beautiful rose. I did think it was going to be slightly more nude than it is kind of like a rosier nude, but it's really going to be your true neutral rose. So let's take a look at just a couple of comparisons after we take a look at these lip swatches. So this lipstick is 3.5 grams of product. It's made in Italy and we have an 18 month shelf life on here. I find the satin formula from Hermes to be very comfortable and they've definitely improved over the years. They've made improvements in my opinion to all of the lipsticks. I think they are a really great formula in general. They're very comfortable. They are gonna give you average wear time for a satin lipstick, maybe like about three, four hours or so but it will kind of pat down, dry down to a stain if you wanna leave it like that. So I think it's a really great formula and I think this is a really great color that fits in well with their permanent line. And let's take a look at just a couple of comparisons. Okay, I wanna start off with a couple of Guerlain shades. So the first one I start off, wanna start off with here is number 63 and this came out with, this is called, I believe, Rosy Bloom. This was limited edition during the Cherry Blossom release this year, and it's gorgeous, but it was a shade that was really hard to get. So let's see how close these are. And I have to say, they are fairly close. I mean, I think Rose Year is a really good alternative to Rosy Bloom from Guerlain. And yeah, I mean, honestly, the differences between them, I actually think there is just maybe the slightest hint of warmth more in the Guerlain versus the Hermes, but it's so incredibly slight. And it's really just gonna be in your base tones because actually the Guerlain has a slightly, I think the overtones are a little cooler. So it's kind of a wash between the two of them. And then one more comparison here from Guerlain. This is number six. This is one of the shades I just recently picked up from them. And I think this is another beautiful, you know, kind of rosy shade. This one does have a little bit more nude in there. Uh, it's just a little bit more of a dustier rose in comparison. But honestly, those are gonna be my closest comparisons. I feel like this is a really great alternative to the rosy blue from Guerlain. So if you're one of the lucky few who are able to get that, you don't need the Hermes. But if you were sad that you missed out on that, I think this is a great one to pick up. 
So I hope this video was helpful. And again, if you have any comparison requests for the Suku items, please be sure to leave those down below in the comments or DM me on Instagram so I can include them in the next video. I cannot wait to see the rest of the collection. In summary, I have to say, I think all of these items were really nice, but for me, the standouts were definitely the eyeshadow palette from Suku, followed by the Rose Briere lipstick from Hermes. And I, yeah, I just really like those. So I have a whole bunch of new products coming up. If you like videos in this style, be sure to subscribe because we will definitely be doing some more videos with new items from a variety of brands coming up very soon. And thank you so much for all of your support. And I hope you enjoyed this. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon.